For the last six years, Reality Winner has been paying the price for being a traitor. At least that's what our government and many of its citizens have called her. For others, however, it is more complicated than that. By now, her story is well documented. She was 25 years old and working in Georgia for a contractor for the National Security Agency where she had top secret clearance. Winner was arrested for leaking to the media an intelligence report that had to do with Russia's role in trying to influence the outcome of the 2016 election. Before any of that, though, the Kingsville native spent six years serving our country in the Air Force. I spoke with her from her home here in South Texas and asked whether her sense of patriotism played a role in what she did. You served as a member of the Air Force for six years, and I think that speaks to a sense of patriotism on your part. Uh, did that become a factor? How much did that play into what you ultimately went to prison for? Part of my service in the United States military was that I served the American people and I served to defend the Constitution of the United States. And as someone who worked in military intelligence, there was the constant struggle of having to double think everything, what I knew what was really going on versus what the average American knew or understood versus what I believe my neighbors and fellow Americans deserve to know. Um, I don't justify what I did. Um, and even the best of intent can't mask the fact that I did commit a serious crime. But everything that I have ever done has been in service of the American people. So let me ask this then, is this something you would do again or would you do it, but maybe look for different ways, different alternatives as to how you carried it out? So I would absolutely not commit a felony again. Um, if I felt that strongly about it and my conscience was that troubled by the information I had seen, I would have found official ways within my agency to address it. However, I also would have spent some time in therapy, working through the emotional issues and the pressure that was building up within me as a troubled citizen, as opposed to doing something rash and illegal. Let me ask you this then, as I understand it, you were very young in a very responsible position. Did that play a part in this at all, the age? Well, when I was that young, I didn't feel that young. <laughs> I felt like, uh, you know, the average 24 year old, 25 year old who knows everything. Um, so I wasn't running around screaming that I was too young for this, but I do feel like at no point in my service, having started a top secret job at the age of 21, all the way until my position as a contractor, was there ever a emotional guide to when you feel that conflict, with whom to speak with it about, and how to handle it. Um, that training wasn't there, and those coping mechanisms weren't taught, and they weren't available. So it, it was definitely um, learning the hard way that you cannot be young and act out uh, while working for a government agency. Now, you've gone on record as saying that perhaps you were a scapegoat, somebody used as an example. Do you still feel that way? I end every day taking responsibility for what I had done and knowing that I pled guilty to the 63 months and three years of probation and that I accepted this. However, in the history of our nation's use of the Espionage Act of 1917, nine times out of 10, it has been used to quell political dissidents. Um, very few times has it been used to actually catch and deter people committing espionage against hostile foreign nations. So there is room to have a nationwide conversation about our use of these laws 
and how we can go back to the original intent, which is to catch spies and to end espionage when it's being committed and to have that justice be served without using people who bring truth to the American people or whistleblowers be um, exposed to the same law and having them being painted in the same light as people committing actual espionage. Um, generally people charged under 793E are used as sort of a political scapegoat, um, but I don't live my life as a sense of a victim or being aggrieved all the time about it because nobody made me do what I did. And I have always accepted responsibility even from day one. And all that has happened to you as a result of, of what you own up to and what you admit freely that you did has created a, a kind of a trauma in your life, hasn't it? It's been very traumatic. Um, I think from my first week in a local county jail before even being convicted of any crime, I was shocked at what this nation demands of people who have made mistakes and the conditions that we are capable of imposing on other Americans, or perhaps it's easier just to ignore it or claim ignorance. But the the trauma has been eye-opening and it has given me a sense of purpose. Let's talk a little about that sense of purpose. Uh, I read that you advocate now for alternatives to prison for those found guilty of committing a crime. What do you have in mind there? Well, stay tuned on the actual policy, but my my method of thinking is that on the economic side, incarcerating people is a huge burden to the taxpayer. And while the taxpayers are paying approximately $32,000 a year per federal inmate, not to mention what you're paying in state taxes to house state inmates, or to pay probation officers for people who are on probation for 10, 15 years after their incarceration, that there are massive corporations that provide products and services to jails and prisons that are making massive profits. And that unpaid labor does exist in our jails and prisons, which is slavery. And so economically it's unconscious, unconscionable that we continue to industrialize our system of justice. Furthermore, we look at who is incarcerated and why. And from a moral standpoint, we as a nation cannot look away from our foundations in slavery and the fact that mass incarceration during Reconstruction simply replaced slavery. And that continues today, even if people are not employed in the same type of labor as the chain gangs from the 1800s, their bodies being incarcerated, again, is the foundation of these other corporations making money off of providing services and goods for them while they're incarcerated. So money is still being made off of the bodies of the incarcerated. And we cannot move forward as a country from that foundation if we continue to shackle and imprison our citizens, our, our minority citizens, for reasons that do not require incarceration. Um, if we also need to look at the legal code, why do certain laws require incarceration if there is no victim? Um, criminalizing addiction, for example, um, the fact that Congress still has not um, address the sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine, even though that is a targeted law against Black Americans. And people are still doing hugely disproportionate sentences behind those laws. And we know why those laws were written. Um, we need to address that as a country, and the average American needs to see the difference between justice and revenge. When we see somebody do something wrong, why do we want them to suffer for it? We want the situation to be resolved and we want that person to know they did something wrong. 
but are we going to spend our own tax dollars to make them suffer for it as well, to hobble them for the rest of their life with a felony conviction? I, I can't work at retail. I applied for every low level retail position in my hometown and nobody called me back. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed with a, a, a wonderful career right now, but if I were to move to another city and need a way to make rent, I couldn't even get a job at Walmart because of my felony conviction. So I'm punished essentially for the rest of my life, not just this probation period. And we're doing that to millions of Americans every single day and then wondering why the crime rate and the poverty rate is what it is. We're constantly shooting ourselves in the foot and wondering why we're limping forward. It's because our system of justice is a system of revenge and it's a system of exploitation. And it has always been. Certainly much to think through and a lot that could uh, take place in a healthy debate, I think, there. I appreciate you sharing that.